the SpaceX Starship test flight, two update is here. The wait is over. It's the time for which everyone was enthusiastically waiting. The SpaceX Starship's test flight, too. You must be wondering, what were the details of the test flight? Was it successful or not? Hi, guys. We are here again with an amazing video. For all the recent updates, do subscribe to our channel. Also, hit the bell icon so you will never miss an update in the future. Let's start the video. Watching the future of human space flight unfold. On Saturday morning, November 18 was amazing. Humanity's greatest hope for a future among the stars arose with the sun over the Gulf of Mexico. For the second time, the most potent aircraft ever built achieved flight and fulfilled our expectations and then some. It's crucial to keep in mind that this second flight's primary objectives were to test the new hot staging system and get the vehicle through stage separation. Anything else would have been a pleasant bonus. SpaceX crews scrubbed a Friday launch because of a malfunctioning grid and actuator, and they spent the entire night de-stacking the Starship and replacing three of the electric motors that regulate the spinning of the incredibly heavy booster grid fins. Two more were replaced out of an excess of caution, although one was found to be broken. Following that, the vehicle was repacked and ready for launch. Ground operations at the Starbase launch pad began immediately to get ready for the booster's fuel loading. Everything was proceeding as planned and this started at T-1 hour and 37 minutes from the scheduled launch time of 7.0 a.m. The trend continued through a pre-flight checklist to 2-4 seconds, which is a programmed hold for the Starship launch. At this point, crews can stop the countdown to allow them more time to make last-minute adjustments. Up to 30 minutes can pass while the ship is held at 40 seconds. Starship has been freed from the hold-down clamps on the launch mount and is currently fully fueled and running on internal power. The countdown resumed and the launch was scheduled after the upper stage's final pressurization was verified. Water is seen flowing out of the new flame diverter device at T5 seconds. First plume of flames from the Raptor engines can then be seen as they rapidly gather up thrust right before the clock strikes zero. Before we see the spacecraft move for the first time, all 33 engines are operating for roughly five seconds. After that, the ship moves extremely swiftly by T plus 10 seconds. The rocket is now traveling at 140 kmp after the booster's tail cleared the top of the launch tower. Since the initial Starship flight test back in April, SpaceX has made numerous changes to the spacecraft and the launch pad which are visible from the moment of liftoff. The rocket's departure from the pad is visible to us, which is the most noticeable difference. There was a massive cloud of smoke, debris, and rock dust after the first launch. Flight 2 did not experience this again. This time, after examining a few various camera views, there isn't any noticeable debris emerging from the launch pad. Everything at the launch site that wasn't bolted down most likely went airborne due to the shockwave although it is impossible to see any ground fragments being ejected as it did previously. Thus, the first findings suggest that the shower functioned as planned. Looking back at the Starship right now, this is how a rocket that burns methane is intended to seem. The ultra-heavy booster produces a perfectly clean, smooth, and consistent plume of fire, and we observe none of the smoky, spitting flames that occurred on flight number one. For the record, this is the first time that this has happened. SpaceX never managed to get all 33 booster engines to operate for the full test duration, not even during ground testing. The Starship is ascending straight and smooth up to max Q. The rocket's body experiences the highest mechanical stress at that same moment, which occurs at T plus one minute five second, 1300 kmph and 10 km above sea level. The stage separation for the main event is reached 90 seconds later. Because we are undertaking hot staging, the ship has reached its furthest point yet. Instead of the usual main engine shutdown or MECO, most engines shut down, leaving the center three Raptors on the booster to continue fighting gravity until the ship gets ready for action. The Starship is now traveling at 5,600 kilometers per hour and is 69 kilometers above Earth. A lot of things are going to happen quickly now. The ship's six engines fire, the clamps holding the rocket's two stages are released, and the hot staging procedure begins. The remaining three booster engines will start to flip the booster 180 degrees as the ship moves away, pointing the top straight back down towards the Earth using their gimbal systems. 
melting side vents of the hot stage ring on the booster, or where we can observe all of the flame and exhaust from the ship engines being deflected out during the hot stage to avoid blasting straight into the booster's top dome. The ship's three center engines are angling as far outside as possible with their gimbals. This is where the first issues appear. As soon as the booster flips, we can see that the first engine restart has already occurred. While most of the 13 interlopers have been relit, a few are still distinctly black. Telemetry indicates that three of the outer ring engines are offline and that only two of the center group's four engines are operating as the booster circles. As a result of their concentration on one side, there is an unbalanced thrust now. Upon completion of the flip, the booster airspeed decreased to around 4,700 MPA. As a result, it loses about 1,000 kmph of velocity during the flip maneuvers. And we can see that one of the three failing booster engines has now been replaced at T plus 3 minutes 15 seconds. There is some sort of occurrence and numerous engines go down at once, taking the failure count to seven Raptors. This could be purposeful in an attempt to balance out the thrust, or it could be an additional error. Now only four of the mid-ring engines remain in service, and they are all closely spaced apart, providing a highly symmetrical thrust from the two remaining center group engines. The rocket itself explodes at three minutes and 20 seconds. This happens quickly, basically. It pops like a balloon at 90 kilometers per hour, and all booster engines are gone by T plus three minutes and 18 seconds. This is the flight termination mechanism removing the booster from the air since the engine problems have caused it to veer significantly off course. This is exactly what it should have done in this circumstance, thus flight number one's self-destruct mechanism was a huge improvement. What happened to the booster? It doesn't appear to have been harmed by the hot staging event, so I guess that there was a problem with tank pressure during the flip, which caused fuel to spill out. After all, Nobody has ever attempted to flip a fuel tank this large in midair. Therefore, although the fluid dynamics are completely unknown, SpaceX now has a lot more information than they did in the past. However, during this entire period, the ship stage has been moving forward and has gained height and velocity as it approaches a little less than orbit. This flight test aims to bring the ship extremely near to orbital velocity while maintaining a speed at which a natural descent occurs without the requirement for a dorbit burn. If the ship gets it to the atmosphere at this speed, the impact will be strong enough to put the heat shield tiles through stress testing. The ground staff is alerting us to the fact that all systems are operating as intended, even though the ship is still using all six engines. Some intriguing white spots that could be UFOs or booster debris capturing sunlight can be seen on video at T plus four minutes. The call for ship trajectory nominal is heard at T plus five minutes, and ship pressure nominal is heard at T plus six minutes, so it seems like everything is moving along rather nicely up there. At 177,000 miles per hour, the ship is 149 kilometers above sea level, and we can observe a column of smoke on video up to T plus seven minutes, seven seconds. With the spacecraft traveling at 21,000 kilometers per hour, and all six engines still running. We witness a second plume at TTE, seven minutes, 40 seconds. Seven minutes and 50 seconds later, the plume is cleared, but the ship's engines are only barely visible, keeping our altitude at roughly U-148 kilometers. Telemetry indicates that all engines were turned off on the Starship at eight minutes and three seconds, with the vehicle traveling at a speed of slightly over 24,000 kilometers per hour. Two seconds later, there is a small puff that is soon followed by a larger puff, signaling the end of Ship 25. As the second engine switched off and the coasting phase, which would have transported the ship the majority of the way around the world to the Pacific Ocean, approached flight termination came into effect relatively late in the second stage burn. The success rate that we saw was likely around 80%. Not having the booster return prevented us from having a re-entry burn or a landing burn over the sea. Secondly, we were spared the ship's minor second engine cutoff. These are the only three major events that we truly missed. Thirdly, it is unfortunate that we were unable to see the upper stages re-entry, since it represents a significant unknown as no one has ever attempted to bring something that large back down from space before. And we still don't know how the Starship's heat shield tiles would hold up under pressure. Some still images already show us 
that many of the tiles broke off during launch, primarily along the weld lines. Therefore, it's likely that the spacecraft would have broken apart anyhow, but we won't know for sure until we reach that point in the journey. These were the details about the SpaceX's Starship Test Flight 2. Hope you liked it. Don't forget to give our video thumbs up 